Hello YouTube. Tonight I'm going to talk about love magic. There's so many people that hit me up for work in regards to love magic. I got to break down love magic, how it works because you know it, it, it's something that a lot of people talk about, they try and they talk about, "Oh, it doesn't work." Let me explain this. And you know, let me explain like this. Before matter of fact, before I even go into explain it, I just want to throw this out there. You know, for those people that, you know, have a sense of, uh, you know, well, not sense, but let's just play this. You have to decipher whether love magic is for you or, you know, or, or not, you know, because, you know, there's people with uh, Western, like Western uh, views of morality, you know, um, what what is right or wrong, you know, so in people with Christian backgrounds. So, you know, you got to really, really decipher what's for you, you know, because love magic, to be honest, is basically going against somebody's will most of the time it's going against somebody's will and enforce like in and forcing them to love you or uh have lust for you or for you to gain whatever you want from them be it whether it's love or sex whatever basically you're going against their will now if that is a problem with you you know that is, then love magic is something that you should not even try like that's something that you shouldn't even open your eyes to even. You should just basically stop watching this video and go somewhere else, you know? Because love magic is basically going against somebody's will. Basically, most of the time, if you don't have the person's permission, you're going against their will. And most of the time, the way love magic is done, you're going against the person's will. Okay. Okay, now let me explain this about love magic. In love magic, you have uh, things that entice. Well, you have things that entice the person's emotions. You know, you have gemstones, you have crystals. You know, gemstones. I mean, same thing. Gemstones, crystals. But you have oils. You have candles. Um, you have incense. These things can be used to entice or bring out different emotions in people, you know? Um, that, you know, basically on the gemstone note or rags, anointed rags or something like that, anointed mojo bags, you know, there's things from jars of honey, you know, there's things, of, you know, but anyway, let's just explain, let me explain like this, you know, when it, when it comes to doing love magic, love magic is a science where you have to have game. When I'm saying, what I mean by game, you have to have the verbal skills of seduction. Uh, matter of fact, I might as well recommend this. You should get all my people that's viewing this video. You should get the book called "The Art of Seduction." I know there's matter of fact, there's one called "The Art of Art." Matter of fact, what was it? The fifty, the forty-eight laws of the forty-eight laws of power, if I'm correct, that you know by Robert Greene. But he also made the the I think it was like the art of uh seduction whatsoever yes um that book is a must because it, it goes into de details about certain things whatsoever about how to how to seduce whatsoever because you definitely need game when you're doing love magic the thing is love magic does not work like oh you know what i'm saying boom i did this and this person just falls in love with me you know now now mind you if you have a love rag on you or a rag that's anointed, whatever, whatever, oil, whatever it is, you know, that can cause like emotional, like, okay, the, a, a sense of attraction while you're in the person's presence. But from a distance, meaning the person's at their house, you know, you definitely, you, you, you definitely have to have something long range for that. But before that can even happen, you definitely have to have game. When I say game, you have to be able to know how to talk to a female. You have to be able to talk to her, find a way to get in, or whether it's a guy, you have to be able to talk your way in. You know, basically talk your way in, you know, with a nice conversation. Hello, how are you? This and that. Never, ever, if you're basically trying to get a female, you never, ever want to make it appear that you are interested. The thing about magic is that you want the magic to work. You don't want the magic. You don't want, it's like, you don't want to put everything into the magic because the magic is natural. It works through the natural or the physical world to manifest. So the thing is, if you don't have the conversation, 
You know, you're definitely not going to basically, you're not going to allow the magic to work because the female can get turned off. Though she's interested, she may lose her focus by the things that you're saying. So definitely with magic, you have to be able to balance it with conversation. Now, when it, that's that's just the onset of seduction. When you first meet the person, that's the first thing you want to do. You want to be able to be neutral. You want to be able to talk as though you're having a friend, a friendly conversation. But while you have your 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 mojo on you, whether it's a gemstone, whatever, you want to stay in that manner of being neutral, where you're talking to the person casually as a friend. You know, therefore, everything has to be as a friend because you're sedu seducing the person. As time goes on, you begin to work on the person. Now, what happens is that they slowly but surely begin to develop feelings from you, artificial feelings that they can't distinguish whether it's theirs or not. So, this is the first phase of love magic. Now, I'm going to go into, I'm going to move a little further into breakup situations Basically calling back someone or bringing someone back into your life that you broke up with. Okay. Or broke up with you. Most of the cases, you know, we, we, you know, most of the cases a person breaks up with us and we basically want them, we want them back. Let me explain something. Situations that occur, breakups that occur, like recent breakups, like let's just say this. I give, I give a person a window, like many customers that I deal with, I give them window time periods, uh, you know, about... Whether something can basically be worked on to bring the person back, whether it's a lost cause whatsoever, because there is such thing as lost causes, you know, where I wouldn't even take on certain jobs itself because it'll be a waste of money, you know. Uh, basically, this is a situation where the person goes far away. It's been like X amount of years since you spoke to the person, you know. Um, I'm like this. Situations like that, you best leave them alone. Whether it's like two years, let's just say two years, you haven't spoken to the person in one year, two years, and you don't have no contact with them, leave the situation alone, you know, and don't even pay your money out to basically root workers, you know, or Santeria practitioners, voodoo, whatever, you know, don't pay your money out because you'd be wasting your money. After a year, you're, you know, you're wasting your time because of how, the amount of work that it takes for to see the person or meet up with the person or catch the person again. I, I had a situation like that where it took me at least probably six years to see the, 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 the job manifest. So think about it. How much money would you be spending for six years to basically see a person? It's not worth it, you know. It's not worth it. So on the same token, so getting back to what I was saying, a breakup that happens two weeks ago, all right, you're still in the ball. Like two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, you're still in the ball game. Still in the ball game, you know. Still, even you know, even with a month, you're still in the ball game. But when you start going down the line, the farther you're apart, the harder it is to bring the person back. The shorter time period you're apart, the easier it is to bring the person back. So basically, the thing about bringing people back, you have to do a lot of evocations. A lot. You can't be lazy. A lot of people look for, like, a lot of customers that come to me look for overnight fix. And it's not happening that way. You have to put a lot of work in to see the results. You know, basically, when you're doing love magic to bring the person back, you have to pay attention to the signs. You have to pay attention to the omens. You know, things like, you know, the signs and omens. You know, you, you know, you get these signs from things and like you walk in, walking down the street, you see a sign of hearts, you know, talking about I miss you. So you walk into the supermarket, you hear songs talking about, you know, love songs, talking about I think about you all the time. These are things relating to the work that you've done. So the thing is, when you're working, you get these, you get these uh, hints of how your work is manifesting, you know? But as far as love magic goes, you know, I'm going to conclude this video. Uh, this is just a brief summary about how it goes, you know. Um, but anyhow, uh, if y'all guys got any questions, if you're interested in my services, you can definitely leave me a message whatsoever. Um, inbox me whatsoever. Uh, and those of you that are on the Sergeant page, you know, basically my golf page whatsoever, y'all can hit me up there. The Sergeant itself message me. You know, I know my page, I mainly talk on golf topics, but it's, you know, okay to message me there as well. Um, with that, I conclude, and I am out. Leave your comments and subscribe.